Welcome back to our Introduction to Flow Cytometry series. If you missed any of the previous episodes, you'll find the links in the description below. And so you don't miss anything upcoming, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon so you stay up to date on all the fun. In today's episode, we'll be talking about optimizing voltage settings on your flow cytometer. Let's dive in. I'm going to walk you through some easy steps so you can adjust your voltage so you can get it picture perfect every time. Now, back in the old flow days when people were running on analog machines, the logic was you run your unstained cells, you put the negatives in the last decade, and you're kind of good to go. On new digital instruments, this is a very bad idea. Do not use this method. So on new digital cytometers, there's two really easy basic things you can do to get pretty good voltage settings. First off, set your negative population so that it's centered nicely around 10 to the 2 or around 100. Essentially what this means is you want the median of that population to be right above 100 so that the spread is on either side of that. This will generally give you a background that's outside of the noise. Second thing you want to make sure is that your positive population isn't too bright for the instrument to detect. So it's on the linear scale of the detector. When you get too bright, you no longer get accurate representation of your fluorescence intensity. So generally, if you set your negative sample centered around 10 to the two, make sure your positive is no brighter than 10 to the five, you're gonna more or less be okay on most standard digital instruments. When you're setting this voltage, you want to make sure you're using your cells from your experiment and not your compensation beads as any sort of bead will have a very different background and potentially also a very different positive signal than you'll find on your cells. The beads tend to capture a lot more antibody and therefore can have a lot higher fluorescence level than your cells. And as a side note here, after you've set your voltage using your cells, you want to make sure that if your compensation beads are too bright and off scale, don't readjust your voltage go back and remake your compensation beads. So using this very basic method of negative at 10 to the 2, positives below 10 to the 5, this will work for most pretty simple standard panels, a couple colors. However, as you increase your panel design, with increasing complexity, you're going to need better optimization of your voltages. When adjusting the voltage, a lot of the times people incorrectly assume that they're changing the laser power. And by bringing, say, the voltage up, that they're going to be putting more laser power onto the cells. This is not the case. When you adjust the voltage, what you're adjusting is the amplification of the signal in the photomultiplier tube. So as you adjust the voltage higher, you have a further amplification of signal. Or lower, you have less amplification of signal. Now every PMT is unique. Each PMT will have a voltage at which they best perform and are best able to resolve above the noise. It's important to note that increasing the PMT voltage above the sweet spot will give you no advantage in improving population resolution. However, decreasing below this point will potentially result in the loss of resolution of dim populations. When it comes to optimizing your voltages, there are a few different methods you can use. Some are very labor intensive, some require basically no work at all. So the easiest method is just using the voltage values given from the calibration beads. On the BD machines, this would be your CS and T values. A more labor intensive method is using the peak two optimization method, where you use eight peak rainbow beads and look for the inflection point in the detection. Somewhere in the middle of those two, you have the method I usually use, which is a voltration essentially a voltage titration. The graph beside me will give a nice representation of how a voltration will work. So looking at the first sample, you can see I've run my sample at 250 volts. I've then taken this exact same sample and run it again at 300 volts, then 350 and so on and so forth, increasing the voltage by 50 volts every time I run the sample. Now as I run this, what I'm looking for essentially is the difference between the negative and the positive 
factoring in the spread of the negative. This is your stain index. And your stain index is going to tell you when you've optimally resolved your signal in that channel. On the stain index graph, you'll see that initially we start with a really low stain index. And this is just simply because we don't have enough voltage to optimally resolve this fluorochrome. So we don't have enough difference between the negative and the positive. As we increase the voltage, our stain index increases to a point because we've maximized then the difference in signal between the negative and the positive. And then you'll see a turning point where we start then to drop in stain index. And this is the point where our background spread is starting to decrease that resolution. It's also the point where we've lost our positives and they're too bright. So again, would not be an ideal voltage to be using. And we're back with a fully recharged microphone. So to recap the methods for voltage setting we've gone over, there are three main methods that people use. So the first is to use the calibration setting. On Diva-based software, this will be the CSNT settings or other calibration settings on other instruments. This is your most basic way of setting your voltage and requires absolutely no work. You walk onto a calibrated machine and you use the voltages that are given. The other method we talked about is the peak two system, where you use rainbow beads or another form of beads with multiple peaks and look for the point where the signal inflects. So basically you've maxed out your signal. Both these methods can work very nicely. However, both rely on using beads, which may have an inherently different fluorescent signature than your cells and may not be the optimal PMT voltage for your experimental setup. As such, I still recommend doing the voltration. So again, the voltration is just running your sample with your stained cells, stained with your antibody at various voltages across a range, and then looking for the point where you have the best resolution of your signal. After people have gone through the process of setting up their optimized voltages, I get two major questions. First off, how do I maintain my optimized voltages over time? For this, I actually recommend going back to the rainbow beads or another form of calibration bead. And using these beads, you're going to set a gate around a peak population. So using the rainbow beads, I like to use peak six, but go wild, pick your own peak. And set a gate around this. And then looking at that peak, I'll determine the medium fluorescence intensity. Then next time I go run my samples, I'll run those same beads again and make sure that that peak, the peak 6 peak, is within plus or minus 10% of the value that I set with my optimized voltage. And in this way, I can adjust my settings so that I'm always within that plus or minus 10%. The second question I'm often asked is, should I adjust my voltage if my compensation is high? First off, it's important to note that adjusting your voltage will change your compensation values. So as you lower the voltage, you will generally have a lower compensation. While this may seem beneficial because people seem to like low compensation values, it may not actually be best for your experiment. And as a side note here, this is why we always recommend running your compensation samples and your experimental samples at the same voltage, because compensation will not be valid at different voltages. So back to the original question, should I adjust my voltage to change my compensation? I have a twofold answer. If you have optimized your voltages, then no, leave your optimized voltages. Again, adjusting your voltage at this point will reduce your ability to discriminate the negative from the positive. So while it may decrease your compensation from high to low, whatever that arbitrary value may be for you, it will impact your ability to resolve your fluorochrome, which is never a good thing to do. If you have not optimized your voltage, I suggest you start there instead of playing around with voltages to get a good compensation value. Now you've noticed a lot of air quotes on this, high, low, good. Compensation is compensation. It is a mathematical calculation. There is no good, no bad, no high, no low, if you've done your controls properly, the compensation you get is the correct compensation. That was a fairly long answer for what seems to be a simple question. To give a quick summary, should you adjust your voltage to change your compensation? I would say generally no. If your voltage has been optimized and you're using proper compensation controls, there is absolutely no reason 
to adjust your voltage to change your compensation. If you'd like more information on compensation and spreading error, make sure you check out our video on this topic. And that's voltage setting in a nutshell. Thanks for joining us today, and make sure you stay tuned for future episodes in our Introduction to Flow Cytometry series. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you don't miss out, and we'll see you in the next one.